Andre, another day and yet another Tesla Cybertruck fail. <laughs> Hosted yes. this time to Instagram uh, by Matt Chambers, uh, whose two friends, uh, Justin uh, Covington and Ryan Stoops, actually had to recover the Cybertruck uh, with an F-250. So in this video, <laughs> we're going to tell you exactly what happened and how the Cybertruck, that one Christmas tree gathering, got yes. stuck. Uh, just outside of, well, it's kind of east of Sacramento and south of uh, Tahoe in California. Yeah, it's in the mountains of California. There is snow, yep. and this kind of a happy holidays. I mean, it had the Cybertruck release candidate, so this is a pre-production truck, had good intentions. It wanted to get a Christmas tree. Yeah, so, right? so somebody from Tesla either decided personally to get a Christmas tree <laughs> or perhaps to do... For a, the office. For the something. office. We, yeah. we, we don't know that. Uh, but what we do know is uh, what followed next was that the truck went off the trail uh, and then was unable to get back up the trail. Yeah, and um, so we have to pretty much define what does it mean to be a pre-production truck. Yes. Also, we could show you these clips that you, the guys who you just named received or captured. Yep. And uh, it seems like there's multiple vehicles pulling this truck in multiple directions. Well, go to the next clip because that's the next one is one. the next one is even more interesting because we can see kind of this uh, F two fifty, an older model of the uh, Ford Super Duty, really just getting it back on the trail. Yeah, so we're going to do a little bit of a forensic uh, deep dive here and try to figure out what happened. What we do know that happened was. Uh, which you mentioned, Andre, was that the uh, F-250, the older one, actually won this tug of war. <laughs> yes. As opposed to the promotional video that uh, Tesla put out. Yeah. So we have a cyber truck. It's trying to go up the hill. What What did the people say when they posted this video to Instagram? So let's, let's go through that first. Yeah. So first of all, they say no clue how he was so far off the trail. So yep. we don't know. And where was he? Uh, this was in Coral Hollow OHV, so off-road vehicle park. Uh, info I received, according to Matt, right, the release candidate version of the Cybertruck with traction control issues due to software problems, it was not aired down. There were no pickup points or recovery front points yep. on this prototype truck. So this is so far all we know. Yep, that's all we know and what we can deduce from the video. Now, keep in mind that uh, the Cybertrucks that are out at least at the uh, Tesla stores, do have recovery points. So in this video, you can clearly tell that they, I think they used the uh, A-arm, actually. To, which you should that, not do. No, that hurts. That, yes. that, you can pull the A-arm right out of the truck. Yeah. So maybe this one doesn't have recovery points. Also, interestingly, in this video, the, the tires, uh, even though they look like they're AT or all-terrain tires, they look very skinny, which in snow could be better. Yeah, skinny and also not very big diameter. Yes. Here, I, I did the freeze frame. And you can see kind of a rope hanging down below the suspension component in the front, which is, you know, if you apply too much force, you can bend that suspension component or rip it out, right? Now, we do have some experience off-roading electric vehicles. In fact, yes. we have a lot of experience off-roading. We've taken the Rivian off-road. We've owned the Hummer EV, and we have off-roaded it. And, of course, the uh, Jeep 4 by e And the one constant among all electric off-roaders is that they're heavy. And yes. that's not grand off-road. Just like in a race car, it's not grand to be heavy. It's not good to be heavy off-road. In fact, our uh, Hummer EV was 9,400 pounds, and we suspect that the Cybertruck is around 7,000 pounds. How much is a Tacoma? So a regular Tacoma would be between like 4,500 pounds and 5,000 pounds of curb weight, which is a ton less than the Cybertruck, potentially. We also off-roaded an F-150 Lightning. Yes. Uh, which, so some of the downside on the light, let's just go over... Uh, what do you really need for off-roading, right? You need ground clearance. Oh, yes. You need lots of, well, articulation, right? So the tires can be in contact with the ground. We need, you need really great tires. And, of course, preferably lockers, right? So in my world, um, and in my world experience, there's nothing better uh, than uh, being triple locked. In other words, uh, center, front, rear uh, diffs are locked, which means that 25% of the power goes to each of the four wheels. So all four wheels are turning all the time. Now, with electric vehicles and with internal combustion engine vehicles, uh, you can use different strategies to simulate that, but it's never as good. So what you can do is, let's say you've got two wheels, rear wheels, and one of the tires is spinning. Uh, torque is being sent to that wheel because it's got the least resistance. You can break that wheel and it sends uh, the torque to the one that has traction. Now, in this sure. video, we see that both of the 
front and rear tires, at least on the driver, no, passenger side are spinning, but that doesn't mean the other side is spinning. Right, and also um, there's a moment where the front is not spinning, the rear is not spinning, so it seems like the Cybertruck prototype is trying to find traction, but it's just not getting anything. Now, th now they did say that it was having software issues, and we don't know if this is the tri-motor or the dual motor. Uh, and in our experience um, with even the quad motor, uh, the electronics uh, in a modern vehicle tend to send power where they think it, there's traction. And we've never actually had an incident where they've sent power, the electronics, to all four wheels at the same time. They're yeah. always kind of trying to figure that out. It happens with the Rivian. Gosh, we've had a lot of experience uh, with the Hummer EV, which is a similar setup, right? It's kind of motor setup. Mechanical locker in the front, uh, electronic locker in the rear. And uh, when I took that to Moab, and more importantly, when we took it up Redcone, uh, what it would do uh, was basically do its best to try to get traction, but it would never send power to all four wheels at the same time. And there was, of course, software issues we had with the Hummer as yes. well. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so it's interesting what's what's going to happen with the production version of the Cybertruck, right? Will it get there? Uh, so we have video. We've been showing you some video of us off-roading. Uh, recently, Alex and Case went out, right? And they took a Rivian quad motor out on our Ironclads trail. And they experienced a moment where the, the truck was climbing up razor rocks. And it was kind of hung up, right? And Alex applied like full throttle or a lot of accelerator pedal. And the truck really didn't respond. Like the computer was trying to figure things out, and it didn't respond. Yeah, because the throttle in an electric vehicle with a lot just of electronics. Button. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's just a suggestion. <laughs> the, the electronics will do what it wants. Now, the other experience that we've had because of the weight of the vehicle, uh, especially with the Hummer EV, we were on a very steep incline, uh, and instead of the vehicle going up, it started to dig kind of four holes, right? Because it didn't have um, it didn't have enough. Uh, traction to overcome the weight pushing down on it. So instead of going up the hill, it kind of went into the hill. <laughs> into the earth. And here you've got the complication of snow as well, uh, which makes things even more difficult. Now, we don't know, like I said, whether this is a tri-motor or a dual motor, uh, but we do know it's got you know spinning wheels in the front and back. And it, so the production Cybertruck is supposed to have all-terrain tire, a 35-inch tall all-terrain tire Goodyear. And this looks like a territory Goodyear pattern to me, but... We cannot get too close to actually verify it 100 percent. And like you said, they, they seem kind of narrow and kind of small diameter in here. And here, here's why this is so interesting, right? Um, look, the, the classic truck has always been three boxes. Um, the fronts, the engine, the middles, the cab, and the back is the bed, right? Tesla broke that mold by creating this triangle of a vehicle. Now, that doesn't mean it's not good off-road, but what makes me a little curious about the fact is that when they did allow three different publications or YouTubers or whatever you want to call them to, to test a truck, uh, they never took it off-road. In fact, there's you know three things that classic trucks do, right, which is go off-road, uh, tow, and haul. Mm -hmm. And yet, in none of those three reviews that we've seen... Um, we didn't see that. No, we didn't yeah, see it. We yeah. saw we saw you know drag racing. Yep. Uh, we certainly saw a walk around, which was great. And driving on the street. And yeah. driving on the street. Yeah. And driving on a racetrack. But we have never seen it actually do the three things that, in my mind, a traditional you know three box truck would do. Um, so you know, as the skeptic in me, I wonder if Tesla didn't allow those three uh, out, outlets to let it do things that it knew the truck was good at. I'm not saying it's not going to be good off-road, but until actually somebody who knows what they're doing off-road takes it off-road, then videos like this are going to keep popping up, uh, you know, showing the thing fail. Uh, and we don't know if it's because uh, it's not capable off-road or because there's software issues or it's because it's the wrong version. Or, or the wrong tires, maybe. Or the wrong, or, or the wrong tires. Yeah. But, you know, it's not a good look for Tesla to have an old F-250 <laughs> pull it out of out of harm's way. And then, of course, there's all the questions about, like, trail damage. I, I, usually in most OHV areas, you probably don't want to go off trail. No, because you're spinning tires, like in this case, right, yeah. and potentially damaging the, uh, the terrain that you're near. So, so, yeah. So, once again, Tesla, if you want to lend us a truck, we will take it and we will honestly and fairly off-road it. Uh, and we can compare it to all the other vehicles that we've off-roaded, which is pretty much, you know, everything from a Unimog... <laughs> All the way to the Tacoma to, or to, the uh, Tacoma. Maverick. To the Maverick. Yeah. Pretty much everything out there that's off-roadable, we've off-roaded. We haven't done a 6x6 six six, uh, uh, Mercedes G-Wagon, but those are hard to get, a, get your hands on. Maybe uh, next time in Middle East. But we have done the 4x4 four four, 
uh, squared. Yeah, we have. Yeah, so we, yeah. Have, we have done that one as well. Uh, anyway, let us know in the comments below what you think happened here. Uh, and uh, we'll be curious to read your comments and, and to see as... Um, you know, as time goes on, if this thing is in fact an off-roader or, you know, if the weight is actually hard for electric vehicles to overcome when they go off trail. There you go. And as always, all the latest automotive news in one place, alttfl.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.